Well, on the bench today, we've got Rock Island 1911 45 ACP. And yeah, it's not the pistol from the thumbnail. Nor is it the pistol that I did the field strip on last week that I was supposed to do the detailed strip this week. Why? Well, in practicing multiple times, what's missing? Multiple times uh, with this uh, Rock Island Arms 10 mil 1911, I decided it'd be a great idea to go ahead and break the ambidextrous safety. This is while I was filming the video and I did it eight times successfully before that and I broke the dang thing in my final of a anyway whatever you can see where this broke off now if you have one of these ambi safety just a quick note on it uh trust me when i tell you on the other side there is a female side to that you see that female side to that it clicks in and it's an audible click and it is hard even with them out of the gun to pull them apart um there's nothing in arms core who makes rock island there's nothing on their website that i could find anywhere in the user's, user's manual nothing that gave me uh an indication that that's you know that i how best to go about removing that um wilson combat has a video on youtube there's a couple people have videos they're like with this uh inserted they're saying you know get a business card or something underneath of there and then a sharpened sharpened screwdriver with some tape on it to ever so gingerly pry it people have polymer uh, pry bars and stuff that's crazy to me that it takes that much anyway i did it wrong i broke it oh well you're gonna make an omelet you gotta break a few ambi safeties i guess so what are we doing instead we're doing this gi model 1911 now the only difference other than it being a 45 uh and that <clears throat> 10 mil has a full length guide rod that you use the paper cleat saw that in the in the field strip video this has a regular barrel bushing regular safety which can still be hard to get out all right but we don't have that ambi safety so we're going to do our detailed strip on this one i went ahead and uh remove the screws just to save some time here to get the the grip plates off one thing you want to know this is any fastener that you're uh, going to be using use the right screwdriver use a hollow ground gunsmith screwdriver one that fits into the slot perfectly otherwise you will eventually uh, booger up your thread heads all right it's got the other side off um, we're going to go ahead and do our field strip now there is such a thing as a barrel bushing wrench that simultaneously pushes down the recoil uh spring um plug here but i just use this little plastic brush push that out of the way spin our barrel bushing and then out comes the recoil spring and plug and just this is a field strip guys all right we uh push our slide back until that little remember our little cut see that little teeny tiny recess right there get that lined up with our slide stop and then pushing on that pin on the back side she just comes right out off comes our slide all right out comes our guide rod barrel comes out the front oh wait again barrel bushing now we have to rotate this through you see there's a little lug in there i'll show you that little lug right there has to be indexed such that it can pull out of the frame. All right, and then out comes the barrel. We're field stripped. Now then, this is where we start our detailed strip. All right, let's start with the firing pin. Here's the firing pin stop that holds that firing pin from shooting out. There's a spring. All right, so we depress that. Keep your hand over it. As you depress that firing pin, I just use my fingernail or my finger, whatever, to slide the stop down a bit. Now I'm gonna cover this with my hand. You're not gonna see this, but I'm gonna push with this punch. It's gonna slide this stop out and the firing pin and spring are gonna shoot into my hand. Okay, just like that. Here it is, and there's the spring. And there's the stop, all right? Next is the extractor. Now this pistol, for whatever reason, I guess because it's brand spanking new, 
that extractor is in there, boy. It is in there. So on my other 1911, I can get in there without <clears throat> prying. You're going to be tempted to pry on this right here. Don't do it. All right, that's a knife edge. It'll it'll mushroom it out and booger it up and mess up your finish, and you do not want that. So if you have an extractor in a 1911 slide that's being a pain, slide your punch through your frame, get it there on your extractor. Now you can push straight through. I even had to do this. A punch on my punch, All right? Just a little, a little love tap. That's all it takes, okay? Now comes the extractor, uh, easy. So I said, right, we're not prying. I'm, I'm putting this in here and I'm pushing, prying off my finger, not off the slide. Okay, there she goes. All right, that's a detailed strip of the, uh, of the slide. Now, if I wanted to, I could take the sights off, but I don't have a sight press and I'm not going to drift. <clears throat> if you were in a pinch and you had to, I don't know, sight this thing in or what have you, uh, you can drift them one way or the other. I'm not doing that. I'm just gonna leave it as it is. No reason to take that apart. So anyway, our slide is detailed strip. Now, we've got our frame. Everything in here is all clocked, just like any semi-auto or any, you know, pretty much anything. And there's an order in which it has to come out. We're going to start by uh, decocking the hammer, because that, that hammer has a strut. You'll see in here in a second. It comes down and pushes on the mainspring that's inside this mainspring housing. When it's cocked, there's a lot of tension in there and it makes this job a hundred times harder. Just decock it. All right, take some tension off. You can drift this pin either way. On this one anyway, I don't know. Your mileage may vary. Just a little tap. Okay, and you can see our mainspring housing uh, pin is coming out. There she goes. All right, so like I said, there's a spring in there. Press down with your thumb. And then you'll be able to push that pin right out. Now we slide this guy down. And uh, I'm going to leave it kind of halfway in because it holds the sear spring in place. That sear spring can start wobbling in there and doing weird stuff. We do not want to bend those fingers. If you know what I'm talking about, if not, you'll see here in a sec. So I'm going to leave the mainspring housing, uh, you know, in the pistol just a little bit. But the tension is off of everything at this point. All right, next... Uh, we need to remove our grip safety. In order to do that, we have to uh, push this pin out. This pin right here is holding our grip safety in, which also happens to be our ambi, um, not our ambi, our uh, uh, slide safety, our thumb safety. So put your hammer back. This this is uh, this requires some feel. Okay, you're gonna get in there and you're gonna wiggle and work this thing until it comes out just like so okay you shouldn't need to hammer that thing out all right okay at this point our grip safety can come out now i'm going to take the main spring housing all the way off and remove my sear spring remember these are the fingers i was saying that you do not want to bend how clever is that john moses browning ladies and gentlemen all right next our hammer and uh, um, hammer strut, whoops, that was the sear pin, dang it. Okay, well, that's all right, it's coming out too. So the hammer and hammer strut. Now, you can take these apart on some models, but if you can see there, Rock Island, for whatever reason, peens over the pin, so this is one part. And even though it has two part numbers, good luck getting it apart. I would just order the whole thing if that were, if that needed to be replaced, they're not that expensive. Um, take our plungers out, and out will come our sear and our disconnector. All right, from there, we're almost done. Um, we've got to remove our mag catch, mag. All right, so we'll see this a little bit better when I take it apart, but you need to kind of depress this. There is, again, just like a lot on this 1911, there's a sweet spot in there. You can't just go twisting on it, you'll break stuff. All right, I just turned counterclockwise and locked it, and out this comes. Now, what did I just do? There's this little 
uh, arm sticking off that goes into the notch. Do you see this rotating? Okay, inside of there is a spring, of course, that wants to rock it into orbit. Keep everything under control. All right, so that's been a part. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it back together so it's ready to go when we reassemble the pistol. And we'll set that here. Uh, we'll get to this in a sec. Now, this frame is stripped, essentially. These um, ferrules can come out if you really needed to get in and, and do some work uh, on some, oh, 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 yeah, trigger. All right, so yeah, anyway, these can come out. You just get a screwdriver in there and twist them out. I'm not gonna bother with that now, they're fine. The uh, fixed ejector, that can come off. There is a tiny pin right there that must be drifted out. And again, I'm not gonna take it off because this thing is is in there so tight and, and press fit in there so tight that I, it's a brand new pistol. If we needed to, we could. I did it on the other 1911, um, but that's how you would, would remove that. You would drift that pin out. I ended up putting some croil on the other one and just working it uh, just little by little. I'm talking teeny, teeny taps with the hammer to loosen things up and I finally got it off. Thought, man, that was, that added like 10 minutes to the video, so we'll, we'll forego that. And then the plunger tube can come off and here's where I admit I have no idea how to do it. I don't know how to do it. I think it's soldered. It must be soldered or somehow press fit in here, but this is a separate piece. It's not machined with the frame. You can see the pinholes in there. If anyone knows how that thing comes off, I haven't found a good video or anything on how best to do it. Um, let me know. Uh, but anyway, for all intents and purposes, that's our detailed strip. Uh, let's do our mainspring so you can see what's in there. Where's my, where's my little punch? Let's see, here we go. All right, this can be a bit of a can of worms because your mainspring cap is right there and it's held inside the mainspring housing by the mainspring cap pin. So we're gonna drift that out, but in order to do that, we have to take some pressure off. And I don't have my vise set up on my bench. So very carefully here, we're gonna press down and we're gonna push that pin out. Our punch takes the place of the pin. It's got some force behind it, so watch out when you pull this thing out. Okay, mainspring out. And the uh, mainspring, what do we call you? Mainspring housing pin retainer. This guy that just sits in there. And there's our mainspring pin. This guy, you can see that it pushes in and clips like so. Yeah, actually, like this, sorry. You know, it rides in that detent holds this pin in place. Okay, we're all apart. Can't uh, can't get any more apart than that. You know, not this guy anyway. So let's put it back together. All right, I just go in reverse order. So the mainspring housing that we just disassembled, getting this thing back together is much harder than taking it apart. Taking it apart's no picnic. Now you can maybe see, can you see that? there is a tiny lip, tiny rim, there you go, okay? That tiny rim is gonna go on the flat side of our mainspring housing. Why? It'll go this way too, but there's a potential that it could walk out because this is the outside of the pistol, whereas here, it's riding against the, uh, the frame itself. So there's no way it's gonna walk out on you. Um, I like to get that started. This is, it's, this is one of those, there's gotta be a better way type things, but hey man, this works. So we hold that in place there, compress our mainspring and the pin goes right in. Yeah? Okay. I'm glad that worked out because I don't know how to edit videos. If that thing had a shot across the shop, boy, that'd be embarrassing. Almost as embarrassing as breaking your other uh, 10 mil. All right, in goes the trigger. We can see that bevel, yeah? 
that's what the uh, disconnector spatula end you know if you look in john moses browning notes he calls this the spatula end and this is the dingus end you look it up prove me wrong so in the trigger goes followed by the mag catch and this holds our trigger in place so how did we get this guy in there well we went through like so uh -huh, just that easy just that easy all right and again sweet spot don't just go cranking on this thing okay we need to find just the right amount of tension boom there it is okay holds our trigger in place doesn't fall out cool next is going to be the disconnector and like i said you see up inside of there that little hole your disconnector uh, dingus end goes in there. All right, oh, let's use my handy dandy tweezers. Yeah. You can just get it in there and, and fiddle it around if you need to, but for video's sake, of course I did it out of frame, right? So into the hole in the frame, center it up. Now our sear is right here, okay? Kind of shark fin. Shark fin to the rear of the pistol. Now, I just so I'm drop it in there and get lucky nine times out of ten. Can you see how it's, uh, the disconnector is in between. Let me plug that out and actually show you. Yeah. Should have just got lucky the first time. Should have just left it. All right. Here we go. Yeah. You see the slot in the middle and disconnector rides in the center of that okay here we go do this again in it goes get it up there where you can see the wear marks where it typically rides and then just do it until the uh the disconnector is going to sit proud out of there and you're gonna have to fiddle it around as we're going to use our sear and disconnector pin. There's a little trick. You can finagle it with the, just the slightest movement of the trigger. So um, it's going to be hard for you to see, but there is a hole and we're trying to line it up. All right. Don't force it. It will go. It just has to be aligned just right. And there it went. Okay. So now we can put in, what are we gonna do next? We're gonna do our um, sear spring, All right? And you can see there's a notch there. That's for this uh, little tab that sticks out and it goes. And then to hold that in place, we will put our main spring housing, again, halfway up. It just holds it in place there. All right, so from there, our next step is gonna be our hammer and our hammer strut. And again, that uh, don't you don't have to let the mainspring housing all the way out, but you are gonna have to find your happy spot. Again, you can fiddle with the trigger. And if you can see we're getting, by fiddling with the trigger and moving the hammer, we're getting that hole to line up. Boom, there it is. So, hammer pin. Get that in there again. There she goes. Now here's where we got to check our half cock. Cool. Full cock. Awesome. Pull the trigger. Sear releases it. Good to go. Uh, next step will be our grip safety. And here's where things can get a little tricky with the reassembly. All right, your grip safety does just go in there. But what was it that holds it in place? Oh man the ubiquitous thumb safety, right? That pin holds our grip safety. Don't forget your plunger, get your plunger in there before you put that thumb safety down. Now, here's where we're back to finagling, okay? Don't force it. Trust me, you want to, don't do it, okay? 
move this stuff around. You're going to have to um, use a punch. Where's my little punch? Keep losing the little guy. What do I do with it? It's right in front of my face. Okay, we're going to go in there. We're going to push that plunger out of the way just enough to where the safety takes it up. And then we pull the hammer back. Bob's your auntie. All right, now the hammer strut. This is gonna be hard to display, all right. Hammer strut, do we remember it? Hanging down here, let's back this off a little. This guy, that one, this, okay. That's what, as we cock the hammer. Yeah, okay, let's take it off safety. Hammer forward, as we cock it, it goes down presses into the mainspring cap and provides the hammer tension. Okay, go messing around, get my sear spring all out of whack. This is this is why it's tough when you're explaining things as you go. So, doing this through the camera adds another element of difficulty. I want that hammer strut to line up right on top of that little detent in the mainspring cap. I've got it. Now I'm gonna let the, as I let the hammer down, I don't wanna lose it. So I'm keeping pressure with my thumb on the mainspring housing, pressing it up as I release that hammer. All right, it's in there. Now, where is our mainspring pin? Again, get it in there. Apply that pressure. Ah, we got to keep our hammer in the uncocked position. And of course, the strut came out. Don't get frustrated, you know. It's, there's people out there that have had 1911s apart and together a million times and they'll go, oh, he's doing it all wrong. Yeah, well, probably. But it just takes some time, okay? All right. We got it started. Now we can just, trust me when I tell you, it's just a tap, okay? Put that, take that pressure off of that. There, okay. So let's double check everything is working. We've got the half cock, full cock, put it on safe, nothing. Take it off a of safe. Let's test the, the grip safety. With no grip safety pressed, it won't fire. And with the grip safety pressed, there she goes. Do not let this hammer smash into your frame. Dry firing is one thing when you have a firing pin in there. And I don't know, you know, if I would trust this little weak spring to absorb too much impact. But man, if you let it go here, the, the hammer is going to strike your frame. And that is no bueno. All right. But... With the exception of our grips, our lower uh, our frame there is reassembled. Okay, moving on to our slide. What did we say? We're just going in reverse order. Some of these I've seen will have a, the spring will uh, be tighter on one side than the other. You want that tight end on the firing pin here. They're both the same. It falls off either way. So I don't know that it matters all that much. Um, I've only put a box of... 45 ACP through this pistol since it's brand new uh, because it is expensive and hard to come by. So people say you want to have, I've heard a lot of people say you want to have at least 500 rounds through your, well, what did we forget? Forgot something. I get to talking about ammo. Remember, take it off, cover it up with your hand. Okay, we're going to want our ejector. Pretty sure, otherwise we got a single shot, okay? And again, I don't know why this ejector is so much tighter than all the others I've ever seen, but using the plastic side, just a little tippy tap and it goes. Okay, firing pin. Anyhow, I've heard plenty of people say, uh, before you trust your 1911, man, you gotta fire at least 500 rounds through it. Well, dude, that's like, you know, 
another couple hundred dollars worth of ammo on top of the price of the gun whereas you buy a glock and it just runs so i don't know but i in in those 50 rounds i bought the cheapest stuff i could find too just old winchester white box just to see how it would feed the 230 grain fmj ran just fine um i've heard that 1911s can be finicky about feeding gi model anyway about feeding uh, anything other than ball ammo, so like hollow points, etc. All right, couldn't have been smooth all the way through. Let's check and see. Now maybe I got a burr or something, or maybe there's something inside the slide that's not allowing our firing pin stop to go in there. All right, could be that our I know what it is, our ejector. I'm sorry, our extractor went in just a bit too far and it is stopping our uh, firing pin stop. That's okay. Remember we got our, it's literally like a thousandth of an inch too far. Yeah, all right. So now it's gonna be too far the other way. I might, yeah, I might take a stone to that or something and take a teeny bit off. It shouldn't be that hard to get in and out of there. All right. And in it goes, just how it should, right? Okay. Cool. Our slide's back together. Now we're back to our field stripped uh, portion. All right, we'll get our barrel bushing on there. Get the barrel in, get the bushing. All right, put my guide rod up there out of the way. Okay, barrel link, remember from the field stripping of the other one, that barrel link. We'll try and hide up in there, try and hide up in there. Just get it there, hold it sideways. This is what works for me. Slide your frame into your slide. And without getting too crazy here, can you see as I slide this, we will watch that barrel of right there should be, yep, right there. Okay. Slide, stop. Uh, this one's a little different. Again, here's another little bit different than the 10 mil. See the shape of that? How this is beveled both directions? Okay, it's got like a little compound miter, you'd call that. And that's so that it goes down, pushes up, and shoves that plunger out of the way. Okay, now back to our little recess, half circle cutout deal. All right. And recoil spring, in she goes. Plug down, spin our bushing on. All right, half cock, full cock, safety works, grip safety works. And hey, this thing is, with the exception of our grips, back together all right yeah, if you want to hang out while I put these on and listen to my little story I'll, I'll get into that uh, oh, what do you say use the right screwdriver um, you know that th this class has been great and I've had a tendency to get frustrated and strong arm things sometimes in my life and and I Maybe that's what I did. Maybe the stress of having that uh, ambi safety apart and together so many times, it, although that just seems, you know, that, that's unacceptable if it's just bad pot metal. And I guess Rock Island has to cut costs somewhere, and maybe that's how they do it. Um, you know, if that's the case, I don't know that I'm as big a fan 
as I once was of, of Rock Island, but it's, I can't, I can't blame the pistol. You know, I'm not a pro. Although all the stuff I've seen from pros doing it, they say it's, it's a kind of a chore to get those things apart. Um, it's 30 bucks right now on Arms Corp for the set of replacement ambi safeties and I will be ordering them but I think it's kind of telling that Wilson Combat there are what 120 130 something like that why are they so much more is it just that Rock Island is using cheap material is it that Wilson uh, machines theirs forges them and then machines them out I don't know a little research on that might clue me in but you know for what I paid for this thing, I think they're going for 480 on Sportsman's or something. Shoots great. Shoots great. The 50 rounds that I put through it, I, I shot, and I thought with these little sights, I would have a hard time, but no, it shot excellent. So um, I'm not going to get rid of it. Would I take it into a, you know, end of the world as we know it type of thing? Man, I don't think so. I, I'll probably stick with the old Glock 19, but... You know, maybe some someday I get a higher end uh, 1911 and, and it's just a better built machine. I don't know. I do love the way they feel and man, the trigger on these is so good compared to anything Glock has. But there it is. There's uh, my final project. I hope anyone who stumbles across this video, that helps you out. Um, I will do another oh. video on this thing when I get the replacement um, Ambi safeties and you know we'll go over that and then if there's interest i notice people are watching these videos now i you know hey these are assignments that i'm turning in for sdi but um if you want to see comparisons between these things you want to see me shoot them you want to see you know whatever i'm no pro gunsmith i'm just a dude has fun and likes guns but uh let me know i, I like making these videos as long as i don't break my gun doing it All right Thumbs up, shoot straight, have fun. Bye.